Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Tawal Mehta, and today we will understand what is the concept of confirmatory tetrad analysis in Smart PLS 4. In my previous video, we had discussed that what are the indications of the formative construct. One, the theory is suggesting or the literature is suggesting that our construct is formative. Second, when the items or the statements are asked in terms of causes or dimensions or parameter, then we can say that it is a formative construct. The third indication is that if the composite reliability and the average variance extracted is the composite reliability is less than 0.7 and the average variance extracted is less than 0.5, then it is an indication it is a formative construct. But if we talk about fourth and fifth point where no model is available, previous literature is not available, or we are quite indecisive that what to do in the scenario that is our construct formative or reflective, then we go for the confirmatory tetrad analysis. Remember one thing, confirmatory tetrad analysis, according to the authors, it is not the silver bullet. If you even after running the confirmatory tetrad analysis, you feel that my construct is reflective or a researcher feels that he that this particular construct is reflective or formative, the decision is of the researcher. So I'm again repeating confirmatory tetrad analysis is not the silver bullet. Now let us understand the mathematical formulation of running the confirmatory tetrad analysis. So here tetrad means four. CTA will only run when any of the construct consists of minimum of four statements. One, two, three, and four. It will work on the concept of covariance. That is covariance of one, two into covariance of three, four minus covariance of one, three into covariance of two, four. So the tetrad is calculated as shown here. So covariance of 1 and 2, this is 1 and 2, into covariance of 3 and 4, so this is 3 and 4, minus covariance of 1 and 3 into covariance of 2 and 4. <clears throat> now what is the whole concept? Let us try to understand. Assume that this loyalty is a reflective construct. If it is a reflective, what will happen that these statements will be strongly correlated with each other. And when they are strongly correlated, when you will calculate the covariance among all of them. So covariance of 1, 2 into covariance of 3 minus covariance of 1, 3 into covariance of 2, 4. This tetrad will, will be equal to or will be nearer to 0. Now, if we talk about the formative scale, what will happen is the correlation will be very low. And this tetrad, this number will be higher than zero. So when it is higher than zero, it is a very clear cut indication that it is a formative, con a formative construct. The name itself suggests tetrad means four. There are some rules for conducting CTA. Each construct must have at least four items. Then only we can uh, run CTA. Maximum of, of 20 items should be there. Part or relationship does not matter. CTA is only concerned about the covariance. Now, when we will run CTA, first of all, we will have to construct the model. Check the p-values of the tetrads of each construct. If 80% of the combinations have p-value more than 0 0.05, then it is a reflective construct. If confidence interval, that is a lower, lower confidence interval and upper confidence interval contains 0 in it, then it is a reflective construct. It means that plus 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 minus minus that is a formative and plus minus it's a reflective. This particular thing you will be able to understand very nicely when we'll be running the confirmatory tetrad analysis in the smart PLS. Now let's go in smart PLS. We have already discussed about this model that is a job satisfaction affecting the staying intention. Organizational commitment affecting the staying intention. Environmental perception affecting the staying intention. So you can zoom the model from here. And co-workers affecting the staying intention. I'll request all my viewers to refer my previous video to understand the flow of this entire lecture series. Now to run the confirmatory tetrad analysis, it is necessary that at least you change one of them and make them uh, make one of the construct formative. 
to make any construct formative what you will do you will click here right click and invert the measurement model or you can have use a shortcut key alt q so now arrows are moving inside and therefore it is a formative scale it's a formative construct similarly here also you can invert the model and make it formative so this is reflective formative reflective reflective and formative Confirmatory tetrad analysis will only work for those constructs which are having minimum four statements in it. If it is having less than four statements, any construct is having less than four statements, CTA will not run for that construct. Take care. Calculate confirmatory tetrad analysis CTA. Start the calculation. Now, this is a very, uh, you can say, very good thing which developers have taken into the software. Do parallel processing. By doing this simple tick, we can reduce the processing time from here. Start the calculation. Uh, I'll click on open the report. Now we will check each construct one by one. The results are here. I'll click on coworkers. You will have to see the p value of it. And we will simultaneously see the guideline also. The guideline is. If 80% of the combinations have p-value more than 0 0.05, then it is a reflective construct, one. And the second is, if it is plus minus, the confidence interval consists of plus minus, plus minus, then it is a reflective construct. Let us see. Here, out of two tetrads which are formed, both of them are having p-value more than 0 0.05. And this consists of Confidence interval low and up consists of minus plus minus plus. It means very clearly it is a reflective construct. Take another example. Environmental perception. Check its p-value. You can see the p-value is again more than 0 0.05. Very clear cut indication that it is a reflective construct. Again check the uh, confidence interval low and up. Negative, positive, negative, positive. It is a reflective construct. Click on job satisfaction. You can see here the p-value is again more than 0 0.05. Again, check the confidence interval minus plus minus plus. So job satisfaction is also a reflective construct. Check for organizational commitment. And you can see here the p-value again, it is more than 0 0.05. And this consists of minus plus minus plus and it is a reflective construct. Now comes the staying in tension. Please pay attention very carefully. Staying in tension. You can see here the p-value has gone down below 0 0.05. One. Second thing is that the confidence interval does not include zero. Positive to positive, positive to positive. So what was the guideline? If your confidence interval, if either it is moving from positive to negative or negative to positive, it is reflective. But either it is having positive positive, which is which we have seen in this case, or it is having negative negative, then it is a formative. So very clearly we can say that a staying intention construct is on is a formative construct. Let us take one more example: the default data set which is given in Smart PLS. I'll click on. ECS model. If the model is not installed, what you can do is if you cannot see the model here, click here on ECS, ECSI, install it, and you will be able to activate the data here. Double click here. Now you can see here it's a big model. So this is Kusal 2 is a formative. Image, sorry, sorry. Kusal 2 is reflective because arrows are moving out. Reflective, 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 reflective. Kusa. Okay. So let us try to run. Uh, let us try, try to run the confirmatory tetrad analysis of Kusa and Kusal you can see. So how we can do this? Let's see. I'll go in calculate.
confirmatory tetra analysis. Also remember one thing that it will not generate the CGA for those constructs which are having only three measured variables or less than four. If any construct is having less than four measured variables, CTA will not run for it. So I'll go and calculate confirmatory tetra analysis. Start the calculation. I'll go and open the report. I'll click on image. Now you can see here the p values. All of them are more than 0 0.05 and minus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus very clear it is a reflective construct. Now you click on perk. Some tetrads have been formed here and you can see the p values here. Now some uh, some tetrads are having p-value more than 0 0.05 and some tetrads are having p-value less than 0 0.05. So if we go according to this, then it is a reflective construct, minus plus. But if we go according to this, it is a, it is a formative construct because it is less than 0 0.05. You can see here. Now what to do? No need to worry. We will take this in a word file. Now we will count the number of tetrads whose p-value is more than 0 0.05. So let us count it. First of all, let us count how many tetrads are there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So total tetrads are 14. Now count those tetrads whose p value is more than 0 0.05. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now calculate the ratio 11 divided by 14. Now this figure turns out to be 0.78 which is 78 percentage. Now let us see the guideline. If 80% of the combinations have p-value more than 0 0.05 then it is a reflective construct. In our case it is not more than 80 percent, it is less than 80 percent. It means that the perk is a formative construct. Is it clear? If this figure was more than 80 percent, this figure was more than 80 percent, we would have concluded that it is a reflective construct. But as this figure is less than 80 percent, we will conclude that it is a formative construct. So for more videos on Smart PLS, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can refer my playlist in which I have already uploaded many videos which are related to Smart PLS. Please don't forget to press the like button and you can also follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter.